Welcome back. In the previous episode, I explained what paper fog is and looked at using a restrainer as the first and by far the easiest way to reduce the fog. So go check it out if you haven't already, it will make this episode easier to follow. This video, though, is all about step two of our war on paper fog, the bleach. I'm Leo Nikishin, this is 10 Rolls of Film, let's do this. If your photographic paper shows distinct fogging, even after you add a substantial amount of restrainer to your developer, you have to ask yourself a couple of hard questions. Are you feeling lucky? And how much time, energy and money are you willing to invest into further improvement? That's because unlike restrainer, adding bleach to your darkroom routine involves quite a bit of work. Let's start with hardware. First of all, we need the bleach. And household bleach, this is not. <laughs> what we are after is a bleach based on potassium ferricyanide and potassium bromide. You can buy potassium ferricyanide and potassium bromide in powder form and mix your own bleach solution, or you can get a pre-mixed concentrate. I am using one from Moersch, as it is easy to find here in Europe, but there are some others out there as well. It's not exactly cheap, but at least the shelf life is near infinite and the stock solution can be diluted anywhere between 1 plus 10, meaning 1 part of bleach plus 10 parts of water, all the way up to 1 plus 200, depending on how quickly you want the bleaching process to occur. I went with 1 plus 50 dilution so that the bleaching occurs just slowly enough for me to be able to monitor it and pull the print out exactly when I need. Second, we need an additional tray to bleach our prints in and a storage bottle for the working solution, of course. Bleach is not particularly sensitive to oxidation, but you definitely don't want it spilling anywhere. Mix the amount of working solution that is needed to fully submerge a print in the tray that you are using. In my case, the tray is 24 by 30 centimeters and I mixed one liter of working solution. Third, you do need some basic protection. It's a good idea to work in proper chemical gloves and avoid skin contact whenever possible. Lab apron is also useful. Important note. As you can guess, potassium ferricyanide contains, well, cyanide. Uh, it is strongly bound to iron here but it may be released as hydrogen cyanide under very specific conditions. For example, if potassium ferricyanide is exposed to direct sunlight for a long period of time, or if it is in contact with a highly acidic environment. Sounds scary, especially since hydrogen cyanide was infamously used to facilitate mass murder in Nazi extermination camps. Realistically speaking, though, you'd have to mix very strong bleach with acidic stop bath concentrate and then boil them <laughs> in order for that to really be even a theoretical possibility within the realm of photography. So the usual wisdom of handling photographic chemicals applies here. Avoid spills and skin contact, keep your workplace clean and well ventilated, and do I even have to say it? Do not drink it. The process itself is quite straightforward. First, you expose, develop, stop, fix, and wash your print as usual. Once your print is washed, you have two choices. You can either bleach right after the wash, or you can dry your print and then bleach it at any point in the future. I decided to bleach my prints during a separate bleaching session as it allows me to bleach prints from multiple printing sessions in one go. Just remember to soak your prints in water for a few minutes before bleaching. It will soften the emulsion and prevent streaks. Once the print is sufficiently soaked, put it into the bleach tray, emulsion up, 
and make sure that the entire surface of the print is fully covered. Agitate by tilting the tray, not too aggressively, but consistently. Uh, it's very important to visually control the process and have a water bath or a water hose ready so that you can wash away the bleach quickly. Once your print is washed, it needs to be refixed and then washed and dried as usual. So, now that we got all the logistics and uh, hardware figured out, let's see what Bleach actually does to a print. Again, it's easiest to demonstrate it with an image editing software like Photoshop in this case, but anything with curves adjustment tool will do. So we open our image, we open curves, and like I said in the previous episode, Fogged Paper starts out a bit like this. It starts out gray instead of white, and then we develop the image and end up with an image that is, a print rather, uh, that is lower in contrast, lower in brightness, and the highlights never have a chance to reach white. They just sort of stay this dull gray shade. And as the name implies, what the bleach does is bleach out the image and it will start doing so from the highlights because the highlights in a positive image contain the least amount or density of black metallic silver and it will, bleach it will get bleached out first and the highlights and the blank spaces will eventually reach what is known as the white point or the whitest and brightest that a specific paper in a specific developer can possibly get. A bit like dragging the white point on our curve all the way up till it hits the limit. And as we know from the previous episode, paper fog affects highlights the most, so this is perfect. But also note that as we move the white point, the entire curve moves up. So even the midtones and the shadows get a bit lighter, not by as much as the highlights, but they do get lighter. And with that in mind, it makes sense to start with a print that is a bit darker, has slightly denser shadows and slightly lower contrast than what we want in the final result, because bleaching will add contrast by dragging the white point and will also lighten the shadows and the midtones. Once we hit this white point, so the, either the blank spaces of the paper or the highlights in the print, in the image itself, that we want to preserve, once they hit you know, the white points, sort of the, once they don't get any brighter, we want to pull out our print from the bleach. That's because you know, we, we want to increase the brightness of the image, we want to increase the contrast, and we want to clear up the highlights. And that's exactly what will have happened by this point. If you keep bleaching further, you will eventually start bleaching out the mid-tones, and then some shadows. And if you keep your print in the bleach for long enough, you will bleach, well, everything and end up with a blank sheet of paper. I decided to use the test prints from the previous episode when I was testing various dilutions of Restrainer. So I took all those test prints and I cut them in half. One half of each test print will be bleached and the other will remain just as it was after Restrainer. That way we can see how bleach works in combination with various dilutions of Restrainer. My reference point is blank spaces and a white boat near the right edge of the frame. I aimed to pull the prints out of the bleach when these areas are close to pure white. It might be a bit tricky to evaluate tones while the print is being bleached because of the yellow color of the bleach, but you can always pull the print out, give it a quick rinse, inspect it and then put it right back into the bleach if you think it needs more time. So let's see what we got. First up, test sheet with 10 milliliters of restrainer. And here is the bleached part. Right off the bat, the blank spaces are way brighter after bleaching, so the fog is definitely reduced. Looking closely though, I think I over bleached this one a little bit as the shadows lost some density and are a bit too light now. But even with too much bleaching, the contrast is still too low and there is very little definition in the highlights, here in the sky for example. Next, this is the test sheet with 20 milliliters of restrainer. 
as you may recall from the first episode, I initially thought it was a bit overexposed or overdeveloped, as it came out darker than the other test prints. And this is how we did in the bleach. Definitely a better balance than the previous sheet. The highlights are about the same, but the shadows are much deeper and there is a good deal more contrast too. So like I said before, starting with denser shadows and a darker print overall really does help if you're going to bleach. Now this is 20 milliliters of restrainer, but with a 30% shorter development, 60 seconds instead of 90. As you may recall from the first episode again, uh, that was to compensate for what I initially thought looked like overexposure or overdevelopment in the previous sheet. And here is the bleached half. Eh, I'd say it's very close to the previous sheet, only a hair lighter overall, but Honestly, I would be pretty happy with either one. Finally, here is the sheet that I exposed with a higher contrast filtration, equivalent to about grade 4.5 instead of 3.5 in the other prints. And I developed this one with 20 milliliters of restrainer and shorter development time. Now, in the first episode, this was clearly the best that I managed to, to achieve with restrainer alone and it helped me to get some of the contrast back even if the fog was not eliminated. And here is the bleached counterpart. Uh oh, definitely, definitely too much contrast, uh, virtually no detail in the sky. Maybe I did over bleach this one slightly as well, but the higher initial contrast would have kept the shadows too dark if I bleached less. And as I showed in my Photoshop demonstration, bleaching does increase contrast, so starting with a print that already has plenty of contrast is generally not such a great idea, unless you're going for a sort of stark, high contrast look, of course. That's all well and good, but did we eliminate paper fog? Well, let's take my best results so far. So it's 20 milliliters of restrainer, reduced development, and then bleach. Here it is and compare it to our reference sheet. That's the one that went straight from its box into the fixer and shows us the limit of how bright and how white this paper can possibly get. Here it is right here. Well, I think they are more different in tone than they are in brightness. Uh, the bleached sheet is definitely a bit warmer sort of very light cream versus bluish white of the reference sheet. But I would not say that the bleached sheet is noticeably darker, maybe just a hair. Uh, in fact, the color grab app on my phone sees both of these as white and doesn't really say that uh, the bleached sheet is gray. So yeah, time for a bit of a fanfare. The paper fog has been defeated, mostly. Before we go all in on the champagne though, time for some conclusions. First of all, yes, bleach is a very powerful, maybe the most powerful weapon against paper fog, and it really shines in combination with a restrainer. And if you are aiming for a print with high contrast and really bright, maybe a little bit clipped highlights, then even Pretty heavy paper fog is not going to be much of an issue. Just expose it with normal filtration for normal contrast, overexpose by about a stop, develop with plenty of restrainer, and then bleach the print till the blank areas start to approach white. Bob's your uncle. However, if you are after a print with a more subtle contrast and a better tone separation, especially in the highlights, Bleaching might not be the best solution and will require quite a bit of trial and error. And unlike Restrainer, uh, bleach is highly dependent on a specific negative that you are trying to print and on your artistic intent, on your interpretation of that negative. Which means that you cannot simply determine you know, a, a specific bleaching time uh, with one sheet of paper and then, for example, just simply apply it to all the paper from the same pack. 
know, it will work for negatives of the same contrast and same tonality, but it will not work for others. And like I said, bleach does add time, complexity, and expense to your printing routine. But there is also a silver lining, because bleach has many other uses in the darkroom besides fighting paper fog. First of all, it can be used to add brilliance to the highlights and increase the contrast even with fresh paper. In fact, that used to be a very popular way of adding contrast back in the day when most papers were graded rather than variable contrast. But there is actually more to bleach than that. What if I told you that even if you over bleach your print, you can still get all of those tones and all of those details right back. That's because potassium ferricyanide bleach doesn't actually erase the image from your print. What it really does is that it converts the black metallic silver, which makes up all the visible tones in your print other than white, into silver halides, essentially converting the bleached areas back into the state that they were in after exposure but before development. So really you could think of the bleach as an undeveloper of sorts. As, and as some of you may have guessed already, those areas can now be redeveloped. And that's how we get all those details and tones back. In fact, if you so desire, you can bleach out the entire image and then develop it back. Or you could develop it differently. And that's where a whole universe of toning techniques and redevelopment techniques comes from. And actually, come to think of it, there is one technique that uses this principle that is also very tolerant of paper fog. Actually, you could also use that technique not in addition to your conventional development, but instead of it. And then you don't even need the bleach. So join me next time as we explore a much more artistic approach to taming paper fog. Lith printing.